We're starting a new series called Reels, and I want to show you something in the Word of God in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. What gain has the worker from his toll? Have I seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with? He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into a man's heart. And I want you to grab a hold of that this morning is, in each and every one of you, eternity has been placed in your heart. Before, when you were in your mother's womb, that eternity was placed in your divine DNA and what God was doing. And there's something that's there that you may kind of put off to the side, you may ignore, you may think to yourself, this can't happen, but there's something in each of our hearts. Let me continue to read. Yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them to be joyful. How many of you know Christians should be joyful? And to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toll. This is God's gift to man. Verse 14 says, I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to that, nor nothing can be taken away. God has done it so that the people fear before him. That which is is already has been. That which is to be already has been. And God seeks what he has been driven away. I wanted to start this morning with telling you that there is something in you. There's a gift, there's a talent, there's a purpose, there's a mission, there's something within you. There's a dream within us. There's a vision within us. There's a lot of times that we look at our own life and we say these words. Has anybody said these words in the past 18 months? If I can just make it through today. If I can just make it to lunch <laughs> If I can make it just to coffee break, if I can make it just to work this morning, if I can just make it to the shower, if I can just make it to that moment, life a lot of times brings us to the place that we're saying, I would love to have my dream, the visions, and the things in life fulfilled in my life, but I'm just trying to make it. In the Old Testament, there's a story. This story is in the book of Ruth where a family, because of famine, because of loss, we, we see their story. They went from the land of, uh, of Bethlehem in Israel to the land of Moab. They, they moved because of famine. This was during the time of the judges that we see from Joshua to judges. And because the people of Israel sinned and came short of the glory of God, because of their sin, there was famine in the land. Because there was sin, there was confusion in the land. Because there was sin, that the families were torn apart through this process. Because of sin that was rampant in the nation. Because they did not make God, the, the, the God of Israel, the Lord of their life. And so we see all this happening over and over again. So this family that started out in covenant moved away from those things. And as they moved away from those things, they made it to the land. And at first, when they were in that land, the father died. And it was a, a family, the father died. And then the two sons died. And the two sons had, had married in the land of Moab. And it was left there that they were in tragedy. And a lot of times this year, and I think we all feel this way, how many of you think that you've gotten a right uppercut? at some time during your day, <laughs> that you felt like you got hit in the nose and you didn't know where it was coming from and you didn't understand. So when a pastor stands up and says these words, that God has a God-given purpose for your life, that the dream that you always wanted to have, to have a marriage that was godly, to raise up children in church and loving the Lord and serving the Lord, 
all those things seem impossible because of COVID, because of this, because of that, because of the situation that's happened in your family. And we all realize this. We knew some things were on the surface, but all this that we have went through, it has been revealed in our life. And so we're struggling so many ways in the dreams, the visions, the hopes, and the purpose that God has for our life. They seem so far away because there's been so many hits, there's been so much struggle, it feels like things have come out from nowhere, and I've said it, and I'll say it again this morning, I know many of you feel this way, you're doing the same job you did 18 months ago, you just added 10 more things to it. You're still trying to raise your family, you're still trying to do all those things, but now you don't know how to even respond to people sometimes. It's like when I go up to shake hands with people, does anybody feel this way? I don't know what to do with my hands. Do I shake? Do I fist bump? Do I nod? Do I bow? I don't know what to do. Some people don't want to shake hands. Some people don't want to fist bump. Some people don't want to hug. And let me tell you, if you're a raised church of God, you hug everybody. Can I get an amen? And so when you understand that part of life is we don't know what to do sometimes. We don't know how to do it sometimes. And we're right in the middle of that. But I will tell you today, even in the middle of the hit that you've had in life, even during the middle of the struggle that you had in life, even when you don't understand what God is doing right now, God still has a purpose for your life. And you may be 17 or you may be 77, but God still has a plan for your life. You may be going through a divorce, but God still has a plan for your life. You may have lost your job, lost the farm, lost everything that you had, and you feel like every dream has been hit and you don't know what to do next, but God still has a purpose for your life. Now, how do we walk out this God-given purpose for our life? There's some things I want to show you in the Word of God. The first thing that we've got to know about on our way to our God-given dreams, the first thing we've got to do is to know our people. you got to know your people. you got to have some people. Everybody needs some people, right? Ruth chapter 1, verse 15, is, and she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people. Your people will be my people. There's a statement there. And your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do, to, do so to me and more also if anything but death. How many of you know this is pretty serious? How many of you remember standing at an altar and saying these words, till death do us part? I know that makes us uncomfortable. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, to death do, do, do us part. That, that's, she was making this statement of, I want you to know I am in this Till the end, you've got to have some people in your life that, that is there until it's over with. And you've got to know who your people are. Now, there was two daughter-in-laws that were here. One went through the motion, but she wasn't willing to move. How many of you know? You know who your true friends are on moving day? You got a heavy piece of furniture to move? You know who those people are, right? And then when you say these words, can I borrow your truck? Everybody's looking straight ahead right now saying, please don't ask to borrow my truck. Please don't ask to borrow my truck. You've got to have some people. See, some people will, will go through the motions. And as long as it's good, they'll stay with you. And as long as it's easy, they'll stay with you. And as long as it doesn't require anything out of them, they'll stay with you. They'll eat your steak. 
They'll, 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 you can bless them. Y'all go on the beach. Well, let us just ride with you. We'll go too. You, you, you got to have some people like that, but you also need some people that, yes, they want to go to the beach with you, but you also need some people that when that piece of furniture is heavy, they'll help you move upstairs in Jesus' name. So you need some people in your life that if you're going to see your God-given dreams, you got to put some people around you because bad company corrupts good character. There's some of you that don't know why your, your dream is not coming to pass yet. You can just look around at your friends, and I can tell you why your dreams are not coming to pass yet because you've got to get with the right people at the right time because the people that are going in the right direction toward their God-given dreams, there will nothing that will stop them. They're going to serve. They're going to give. They're going to do what God's called them to do. Now, I'm going to love everybody. How many of you know church? We're going to love everybody. But everybody can't go to where I'm going. So I've got to have some people with me that says, hey, we are ride and die. We, we will do whatever it takes to get there, and I'm going to get there in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm going to let you know something, okay? This will be a shock to y'all, and this is the theological term for it, okay? This is, I'm going to give you your theology. I paid $40,000 for mine. This is free for y'all, okay? People are flaky. People are flaky. People will tell you what you want to hear. People will tell you, oh, yeah, I'm going to pray with you. I need some people that in the middle of Walmart are going to pray with me. I need some people when it's inconvenient that's going to serve. I need some people that's going to give, not, not tipping God, but we're going to go all the way and do what God's called us to do. I need some people that are going to say, God... I, I don't care what happens. I don't care what goes on. God, I'm going to do it your way, and we're going to make it to the mountaintop. I, I may be in the valley right now, but I'm not going to stay there forever because I was never meant for the valley. I was meant for the mountaintop, and I have to go through some valleys to get to the mountaintop, but I'm going to do what God's called me to do, and I need some people that will go with me. I need some people when the load gets heavy that they carry the load for me. I need some people that when their load gets heavy. I can carry the load for them. We're going to bear one another's burdens together because we're a family and we're not flaky. We're going to do what God's called us to do. And you need to know your people. Now, you say, Pastor, I'm the only one that has, you know, flaky people in my life. Let me tell you about the Apostle Paul. He wrote these words. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For Demas in love with this present world, has deserted me. Now, this is like you put under the caption on IG. Deserted me. This is bad. He's just saying, there's some people that's going to leave you no matter what you do. You can beg, you can plead, you can pay, you can do everything, and you can say, they're going to leave and let me tell you something, they're going to leave, and you're still going to be okay and see God's vision in your life. Second thing I want to show you is that you need to work to see God's given dream in your life. You need to work in the field that God has you in. Ruth chapter 2 verse 2 said, Ruth said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him whose sight I shall find favor. And she said, go, my daughter. Now, this, I, I, I'm going to try to set you up here because I, I, I need you to see this. Naomi, in the first chapter, kept on saying these words, the Lord Almighty is against me. The Lord Almighty is against me. The Lord Almighty is against me. She was having a bad day. Anybody had a bad day in the past 18 months? I'm stressed. I'm anxious. I'm disappointed. I can't believe it got canceled. I can't believe these things happened in my life. She was having a bad day, but you need some people around you right now in Jesus' name that can say, yes, you're having a bad day right now, but we're still going to work in the field that God's given us. 
We're still going to do what God has called us to do right now in the way that God wants us to do it. And so I'm going to work in my field. Let me say this. Let me say this to everybody. You can't expect to see God's dream in your life if you're willing to stay still. You got to get moving. It says, through love and faithfulness, you will find my favor. We need some love and some faithfulness. When you don't feel like showing up at work, show up anyways. When you don't feel like worshiping, worship anyways. When you don't like the song, worship anyways. When you don't like the style, worship anyways. When you don't see it's a holiday weekend and you don't know if you should worship or not when it's a holiday weekend, go ahead and worship. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and serve. Go ahead and do what God's called you to do. And if you'll work in the field that God has you in right now, when you need the next field, it will be there too. Because you've been faithful over the small things, God can give you the greater things. Give him praise. Verse 10 says, Then she fell on her face. Now, by this time, Boaz, which would later be the kinsman redeemer, she was in his field. There's a principle here I want you to see. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and, she, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me? Since I am, I, I am a foreigner, but Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me. And how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to, the, came to a people that you did not know before. And the Lord will repay you for what you have done. And a full reward will be given to you by the Lord the God of Israel, under whose wings you have taken refuge. Now, let me just share this with you. God sees. God sees when you arrive 15 minutes early, and God sees the other part of that too. God sees when you worship when you don't feel like it. God sees... When you do the right thing at the right time, God sees, God understands. You don't think that they notice. You don't really need them to notice. You're, get, you're trying to get people to notice you that can't bless you. And the people that, that, that you need to get to notice you has the best view of your life. And he's got a view from heaven. And if you'll keep on being Faithful in the small things. Keep on loving in the small things. Keep your mouth under check. Keep that tongue under control. Do what God has called you to do in this time and season in your life. God's got a way that you don't even expect. And everybody will say these words. Well, they're just an overnight success. Let me tell you, they didn't see the time that you had to go when nobody else went. They didn't see the time that you prayed when nobody else prayed. They didn't see the time that you served and your body was aching all over. But they saw the time because God is seeing a time and a season right now that He's looking for somebody all over the face of this earth that will serve Him with all of their hearts. So work in your field. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. It says, in all told, there is profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Now, I don't know if y'all know it. Some of y'all probably consider this. How many of you know pastor was raised in the South? I know my accent gives me away some days. Like y'all thought I was from Maine or Michigan or somewhere like that, I know. If you didn't know, I'm from Alabama. The very affluent part of Alabama. Oxford, like England. When I was growing up, I had this word I said that my mother, which was from South Alabama, would correct me at all the time. Now, I don't know if you use this word. But I use this word. Anybody fixing to do something? You fixing to do it? I mean, just, just fixing to do it. 
And mother would say, no, no, you're about to do it. And I'd say, yes, mom. And then I'd go outside and say, I'm fixing to do this. <laughs> I was brave at seven. I went outside to do it. But there's something about people that are fixing to do something. See, you've been fixing to do something for a long time. But now it's time for you to start doing what God has called you to do. <laughs> You've been on ready, set for long enough. You've been on that moment in your life long enough that you were going to fully get in to the presence of God and the power of God in your life. You were fixing to pray, but now it's time to pray. You were fixing to serve, but now it's time to serve. You were fixing to give, but now it's time to give. It's time for you and your house to make up in your mind that I'm all in. I'm going to worship. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. And wherever God gets has me at this season in my life. I'm going to serve with all of my heart. I'm going to sweep with all of my heart. I'm going to farm with all of my heart. I'm going to love my family with all of my heart. I'm going to do everything that God has called me to do with all of my heart and I'm not going back. I'm not going under. I'm not going to let anybody take me out but I'm going forward in Jesus name and by His grace right now. Playing athletics growing up, I'd have coaches to tell me these words. Best way to get hurt is to go half-heartedly. Best way to get hurt. You better go at it with all of your heart. Church, this world will take you out if you're half-hearted. It'll take you out of church. 64% of people that were, were in church before COVID have not made it back in the church door. And it's prophetic. He said in the last days there will be a great flaw falling away. It, see, it's not time for us to say, I'm about to do something. It's time for us to get busy about doing something. Third thing I want to tell you. It's time to take a risk to see the miracle. From Ruth chapter 3, verse 3. She went back to her mother-in-law and said, Boaz has shown me favor. What do I do next? Now, I'm going to tell every single person here this. And I want to, I want to talk to very specifically believers right now. You need three people in your life. Our ladies, you need three people in your life. You need spiritual mothers in your life. You need spiritual sisters in your life. And you need spiritual daughters in your life. Men, you need spiritual fathers in your life. You need spiritual brothers in your life. And you need spiritual sons in your life. The only way that you're going to do what Christ has called you to do is to have those three people in your life. You need to have that. So she went back to her mother-in-law, and her mother-in-law said these words, Wash therefore and anoint yourself, and put on the cloak, and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. And she replied, all that you say, I will do. The risk is worth the reward. But with the risk, there is a rest. There's a rest in the risk. You're saying, Pastor... I don't know if I, I don't know I, if if I get out of my comfort zone, can I find what God wants me to do? Can I find that song within me? Can I find that business within me? Can I find that book within me? Can I find that dream for my family to be saved within me again? I've been hit so much. I don't know what to do next. Is there anything that's still in me? And let me tell you something: in the risk, there is a reward, and that reward is rest. That rest that you find there. Now faith is believing. Faith is believing. Let me show you this. At midnight, the man was startled and turned over. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. 
He said, who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. Now, let me explain this. Some of our men in here will, will, will shout me down in just a minute, okay? In this culture, they did not give rings out for engagement. What they would do is take a garment, take a coat, and put over whom they wanted to marry. And it would cover them. And what she was saying is, cover me. Be the redeemer. Now notice this. It said, and he said, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first that you have gone after the young men, whether poor or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all you ask. For all my fellow townsmen know that you are a worthy woman. Now she had worked. She had followed Naomi. She had followed from Moab to Bethlehem. She went from the pagan place to the house of bread. She had done everything that she knew how to do. She knew her people. Where other people went through the motions, she was willing to move. Where other people said, uh-uh, I'm not going to do this job right here. It's beneath me. Let me tell you. The blood of Jesus Christ has washed away all our sins. How many of you know we're just here to serve? We're just here to be a blessing. Our titles don't matter. Our position doesn't matter. What matters is we humble ourselves before God and He exalts us in due season. Nothing else matters. But let me tell you something. When she took the risk, because the risk is there. Faith is believing our Redeemer will work out the details if we are willing to walk out our faith. See, she said these words. I'll do whatever you say. Now notice this. I want to show you this. In Roman, uh, Ruth chapter 3 verse 18. says, she replied, wait my daughter until you have learned how this matter turns out. For the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. Now, if you don't realize anything else I'm saying, I want you to grab a hold of this. When you step out by faith and know who your Redeemer is, your Redeemer works out the details. All you have to do is walk it out. Your Redeemer is the one that works out the details. Anybody got any details in your life right now? Anybody got any complications in your life right now? Anybody got anything that looks impossible from the outside and you can't do it? But let me tell you something about your Redeemer. See, this kinsman Redeemer was going to the gate. And at the gate, he was going to meet with the person that was closer, that was one, the one that could have redeemed. But the Redeemer was already on the scene and God was already going to do the work. For some of you today, you think it's impossible. And God is saying, it's not impossible with me. Put your faith in a Redeemer that can work out every detail. You just walk out your faith. In Ruth chapter 4 verse 1 says, Now Boaz had gone to the gate and sat there. And behold, the Redeemer of, of whom Boaz had spoken came by. So Boaz said, turn aside, friend, sit down. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, sit down. So they sat down. I love it. I love it. I love it. He had business to do. Anybody in here ever get focused and lose perspective of everything else around you? I need all the men to say Amen. I'm going to do the project right now. The kids can run out of the house and look any way that they can look. And you say, but we got to get this project done. I'm always amazed at Shanna, especially when the kids were little, that they can be running around her, crawling over her, and she write a paper all at the same time. Because there's something about somebody that's focused on the right thing that they've got to get the task done in this moment. That's what we're doing right now. We're saying, God, 
Whatever it takes for this to happen, my faith is in my Redeemer that can work out every detail of my life if I will just walk out my faith. In Psalms 46, verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God, and I will be exalted above the nations, and I will exalt in the earth. I I just want to share this with somebody. There's some of you that because of this season that you're in right now, you have struggled with being double-minded and unstable in all your ways. You've thought about running. You've thought about hiding. You've thought about not serving. You've thought about not being in a small group. You've thought about not not using your gifts and your talents, opening up the business that God's called you to open up. You've thought about everything in the book. If I could just run, I know. Can I can I just take a little survey right now? How many of you have thought about like you know becoming the person out in the woods with the solar panels and away from everybody? Say amen. And then you figured out the solar panels didn't work. And you gotta, I gotta have my iPhone to make sure that I'm away from everybody, but post about everything. So that ruined you. But it came to the place that you just said, "I don't have any place to run." There's some of you this morning that I believe with all of my heart that you run out of places to run right now. You've been running for 18 months. Some of you have been running for two years. Some of you have been running for five and ten years. There is a God-sized hole in your life right now. And you run over here, and it looks successful. But that didn't satisfy. You run over here, And you went from this addiction to this addiction. It's not drugs or alcohol anymore. You've just run from this conference to this conference. You've just run from this high to this high. You left this high over here. But you know the high that I'm talking about. But now you went to another high. It's called religion. And you're trying to run from this to that to the other. And it's time for you just to get to the place in your life that you're you're tired of running. And now, 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 you say, no, I'm through running. God, If you can use anything, you can use me. You run from field to field. You run from problem to problem. You run from one dysfunction to the other dysfunction to the other dysfunction, and it looks all right on the outside, and the crops came in, and it was good, and the business is doing okay, and the relationship looks okay, but you're sick and tired of being sick and tired because there's a God-given dream in your DNA of who you are, and you know without Him being the center of everything that you're doing, and without Him being first in your life, you're always going to be running And I believe some of you, and I believe you came this morning for this very specific thing. Some of you have run out of running. You may have even run out of money. If you would have had gas this week, you would have ran off again. If you would have had the money to make it there, you would have run to another thing again. And there's nothing wrong with traveling. There's nothing wrong with those things. I'm not saying that. But it's sick. There's something in you right now that just says, I cannot run anymore. I'm miserable. I can't do this anymore. I can play church. I can play religion. I can play denomination. I can play a lot of things, but I'm sick and tired of running. I'm sick and tired of the moment that I'm in right now. God, 
I need the dream that you put in the eternity of my life, in my soul, in my mind, in my heart, that you put in me right now. God, I need that. I can't do this anymore. And there's a desperate cry in the land for somebody that will stand up and say, where you go, I will go. You die, I'll die with you. I'll die on that hill. I'll die on that conviction. I'll die getting somebody else the message of Jesus Christ. I'll do whatever it takes. Because the dream that, that was put in me when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ, I've run, I've hid, but now it's time for me to say, God, you get it all. You get my everything. You get my everything. You get my failures. You get my past. You get my dreams. You get my dysfunction. You get my anxieties. You get everything, God. I don't have anything else. I'm so tired of running. I'm so tired of just going through the motions. I'm so tired of those things happening in my life again and again and again. And I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere. And I don't think the deliverance will ever happen in my life. But I know today you brought me here for this moment. I don't have anywhere to run. I don't have anywhere to hide. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I wonder if you could be that honest with God. That just said, I'm tired of running. I want to see the God-given purpose done in my life. I'm tired of just going through the motions. There's an old song that just simply says it this way. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Every hour, I need you. I need you because I can't do this. But I know what you put in me. I know what you put in me. See, by Naomi and Ruth moving, they saved their family. There's some of you that if you'll start dreaming again, you'll see your spouse saved in the name of Jesus. If you'll start dreaming again, you'll see those prodigal children come back home. Some of you can change a city some of you can change a county. Some of you can change a state. And some of you can make an impact on this world that thousands of people will be saved. I need you, Lord. I need you. Every hour, I need you. So Boaz redeemed Ruth. She had a son, and his name was Obed. The ladies of the town named this child. Obed means simply worship. Because when you do what God's called you to do, he gets all the glory and the honor. And Obed had a son, and his son was named Jesse and Jesse had a son and his name was David and David had a son and his name was Solomon and in the line and the lineage of all those men because of one woman that said I have a God given dream within me that I'm leaving Moab and I'm going back to the house of bread nations were changed and you and I sit here today 
with the confidence, reassurance of this one truth. If I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, I shall be saved. Because this one woman decided, I'm going to change my whole family and I'm going to have a dream. A dream that's going to last for generations. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes right there where you are. I believe there's people here today that whatever's going on in your life, whatever's going on in your heart right now, you're just saying, Pastor, I've let my dreams go. I've been in survival mode. I've went through the motions. But today is my day that I want to see my dreams come to pass. And I'm willing to jump on board. I'm willing to work on the fields. I'm willing to do what Christ has called me to do. I'm going to get the right people around me. I'm willing to take the risk. Because faith is the confidence, reassurance that your Redeemer will work out the details. And because He works out the details, I've just got to walk out the faith. And so this morning, you say, Pastor, I want the dreams to come to pass. If that's you this morning, I want to have a prayer with you. If that's you, just as a sign of surrender, I want you to lift both hands to heaven right now and say, Pastor, I want to see the dreams come to pass. I want to see my dreams that God put in my DNA. I want them to see them come to pass. Heavenly Father, you see the hands lifted all over this sanctuary where people are saying, I want to see the dream come to pass. I want to see the miracles happen. I want to see freedom in Jesus' name and by your grace. I don't want to go back to the dysfunction. I don't want to go back to just making it through. But God, I want to see the dreams come to pass in my family, in my life, in my marriage, in my farm, in my business, in my life. God, I want to see the dreams come to pass. Father, I believe that you're doing that work of grace in Jesus' name. If you will, just lower your hands right now and stay reverent right there where you are, and we're going to pray together. There's some of you that say these words. Pastor, I want to see the dream come to pass, but I'm away from the Lord right now. I am in a backslidden condition. I've allowed sin. I've allowed my flesh. I've allowed life to draw me back. And I, I want to change. I've got to change. There's others of you that walked in this building today and online that say, Pastor, I've never known Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But I want to know today that He's my Savior and Lord. I want you to pray a very simple prayer with me this morning. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Let your blood wash away all of my sins. I will serve you as my Savior and my Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stay with your head bowed and your eyes closed just for another moment. Online, if you did that, if you'll put that in the comments. We're just going to let you know what's going on with that. And your next steps, we're having baptism today, but your next step is to be baptized, get in a small group. You say, Pastor, I made a decision to follow Jesus Christ today in this sanctuary. I just want you to lift up your hand right there where you are. I made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. I made a decision to follow Him with all of my heart. Thank you. Praise God. 